Previously on AMC's Tomato Ghost. Now, if you excuse me, I need to cleanse myself with a bath. Oh, oh, jeez! Oh, I know exactly what to do with you. Play through it and give it a fair review. Here's a surprise. I love Aladdin. That's the plot of Return of Jafar. The scariest thing for me are spiders. Spiders! You know, Claw, I really... You don't think you're him. You probably couldn't tell. I love Aladdin and I love the Aladdin sequels. So when I found this in a second-hand game shop for 50p, I was intrigued. I'd never heard of it before, so I thought... What the hell? What's the worst that could happen? Nazira's Revenge released in 2001 for the PS1 and PC. While I am looking at the PC version, it's worth noting that both versions are identical. It was developed by Argonaut Games, who have an interesting resume. They range from the Croc Games and Bug Bumble to the Emperor's New Groove and Catwoman? Weirdly enough, they helped develop the original Star Fox. Wild card, bitches! This brings us to Nazira's revenge. So after Jafar's death in The Return of Jafar, his sister Nazira, who we've never heard of before, has never been addressed or even hinted at and just came the hell out of nowhere, devises a plan to bring Jafar back from the dead and exact revenge on Aladdin and friends. Well, who's this handsome customer? What's going on? Up! Ah, leave me alone! Oh, what? What, what, what's going on there? <laughs> yep, no avoiding this. The graphics are pretty bad. No one's face moves, and everyone moves their hands around really erratically. So when characters sound distressed, but their faces don't change, it, it kind of kills the immersion. What little there was. A few cutscenes in, and seeing that Aladdin sleeps very uncomfortably, I am so glad they got most of the original voice actors back. The only ones they didn't get were the Sultan and Genie. And now, it's time to play... Genie. On our hit game show, we spin the wheel to find out who will be voicing Genie today. Will it be A. Robin Williams, B. Dan Castellaneta, or C. Jim Meskimin? Take a chance now, give it a spin. Oh, Dan Castellaneta, come on down! And you know, I never really minded Dan Castellaneta as Genie, I felt he brought his own interpretation to the role. But here, he... he sounds more Homer simpson -y than usual. How could you do this to me after all I've done for you? Oh! In fact, speaking of voices, Nazira sounds very familiar. Spirits of darkness, hear my call. On this fateful night, I command the powers of evil heart of that world. Yep, believe it or not, Jodie Benson, Ariel herself, is the voice of Nazira. And I can tell she's having a blast. Oh my, oh yes. I think I'm going to enjoy my stay here. <laughs> I would sum up Nozira's Revenge as a 3D platformer with a strong focus on sword combat. It's very much a 3D version of the Sega Genesis Mega Drive. Megasis version with the platforming and the sword fighting. It spans across a vast variety of Aladdin based locations such as the streets of Agrabah, the Cave of Wonders and the Oasis. So the game's opening level takes us through Agrabah as Aladdin fights his way through to the palace. Upon arriving we meet the villain of the game, Nazira. Where do you think you're going, street rat? Razul, you ain't looking so good. I mean, it sounds like Rizal, but he... he doesn't look right. And one would think that, this being the first boss, he would be the easiest. <laughs> uh, no. He's the hardest. The sad thing is, though, that doesn't really mean anything. All you have to do is dodge his attacks and hack him to pieces. And now permit me to be a big Aladdin fanboy because I freaked out when I saw the enemies in the Oasis stage. Recognize them? They're two of the 40 thieves from the third film. When we drop by for cookies and tea. The level ends with Aladdin traveling through a waterfall and winding up at the, at the top of a mountain. What? And yes, the boss is a giant spider, of course. Spider! Are you said already? 
Fucking spiders again. The next level begins with a boo and a Latin tracking down the Cave of Wonders. Which isn't too hard. Just follow the golden scarab, but uh, d don't, don't go off the path. That was my favorite part of the movie. Now mark my words, the Cave of Wonders is fucking horrendous. It's at this point that the sloppy platforming really comes back to bite you in the ass. I realize that it's bloody hard to tell where you're going to land, which makes long stretch of platforms finicky. You also have to deal with time platforms and trust me, you have to be really fast on these. I lost count of how many times I jumped only to see the platform disappear from below me. After dying many, many times, Aladdin finally makes it to Genie. Abu, go into the small chamber and see if you could find something that'll set Genie and Carpet free. I just love how Abu stops at the last second just to contemplate what he's about to do. After the hell Aladdin went through, I don't blame him. This level is actually much nicer than the previous schlock, but you have to make sure that you pick up all the map pieces. If you miss one and reach the end, okay, nothing happens, but you have to track back through the entire level. At least it's mercifully short. File this one under breather level. Way to go, Abu! Now let's try to release Genie and Carpet. <laughs> Free at last! Oh! Small spaces like that give you such a crick in the neck! You son of a bitch! Also, remember that thing Abu did in the film that the cave told him not to do? Touch nothing, or you will never see the light of day! Abu! I told you not to touch anything! Memory of a fucking goldfish. See? No juice. So now Aladdin and co have to escape the Cave of Wonders. And you know how they're gonna do that? Well, remember the incredibly hard level from the Super Nintendo game? Yeah, imagine that in 3D with fucking awful controls. Eventually they escape the cave and are confronted by a fortune teller. Come on guys, we got a pyramid to find! Actually Aladdin, your debt to me is all paid. I should be shocked by that twist, but what's going through my mind is uh... When Genie's in that pot, he looks like when Patrick got stuck in that trombone. The gang travels to the pyramids in order to find Jasmine. You know, those Arabian pyramids. So let's start this level. Alas, that isn't it. Turns out that, rather than follow a linear chapter structure like the other levels do, the first level of the pyramid acts more like a hub world where you can access the three other levels in any order you choose. The pyramid levels are... okay. They have a stronger focus on puzzles with less enemies, like this block puzzle for example which, to be honest, I couldn't have done without a guide. However, what the guide didn't prepare me for was this. <laughs> Well, that was unexpected. Out of nowhere, we get a Mario 64-like moment, and now Aladdin is surfing on Genie. No context, no mention, no point. So Aladdin tracks down Jasmine and has to fight against a giant statue of Anubis in an insultingly pissy fight. The only way Anubis himself can attack you is if you stay too far away from him. Stay up close, break his barrier, and get him. About as embarrassing as this, Anubis. With Jasmine free, we finally get a level dedicated to her. Now, if other games are anything to go by, she'll be kicking ass. Or hiding in a pot. Suddenly I'm getting flashbacks from Wind Waker and Metal Gear. Oh boy, did I have a hard time with this level. Once again, the jumping ruined it even more than usual. It feels like the pot really weighs down Jasmine and she plummets instantly before making the jump. Meaning that you have to tackle each jump at an angle. Now, the main gimmick of this level is ducking into the pot when guards are around. What doesn't help is that they catch you if they walk into you. I can't tell where they're going to go, so there's that horrific moment of dread when they slowly approach you, knowing that you're doomed. And stay out! But at least the guards are good at their jobs. Good for them. Ah, and with that level out of the way, I can finally rest easy. You've only got a short time to get out of here before the magic door closes, Al! RUN! Jesus Christ! You heard the man. This level is a mad dash to the exit, so there's no time to prepare for any bullshit platforming. Doesn't help when Stalfos pop out the ground. And then there's this guy. <laughs> Poor bastard's trying his best. I'll get you, human! Uh, I don't think you're trying hard enough. Quiet, Sans! I don't even mind this level too much. It's at this point I learned that it's much easier to run and jump onto platforms rather than stop and consider them. After the mad dash, Aladdin stretches through the portal, and we arrive in the ancient city. What ancient city? Uh, 
Keys, oh, look at the keys, look at the keys, look at the keys. Believe it or not, the ancient city is my favorite level. Yes, amazingly, I have a favorite level. More so the inside, but the outside has a nice idea behind it. These Kali statues aren't all they seem. Just don't push them too far, okay? Oh, I'm gonna push them. I shouldn't have pushed them. I think the reason I like the inside of the ancient city is because it reminds me of some other games. There are a ton of block puzzles that remind me of the forest temple from Ocarina of Time, as well as an organ puzzle identical to Banjo-Kazooie. Less bullshit this time. I mean, there's bullshit like this. And this heartbreaking moment. I did it! I'm almost at the end of the level! I beat all those puzzles, got everything, yeah, I'm almost there! Oh, for fuck's sake! But you know, less bullshit. And after another organ puzzle, we fight the boss in order to save the Sultan. Who's the boss? You know the evil Sultan! Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, the evil Sultan! Never heard of him, nor what he is Sultan of, nor why he actually uses the title Evil Sultan. Nor why he's a fucking pushover! Yeah, he didn't land a single hit on me. Fucking great boss! After defeating the evil Sultan, total screen time about 30 seconds, Aladdin finally reaches Nazira's lair. Ah, the poor bastard doesn't realise the absolute weapon grade horrendous difficult bullshit he's about to get himself into. Nazira's lair is somehow worse than the Cave of Wonders. I didn't even think that was possible. On one hand, the fact that you fall into lava rather than pits is a blessing since it's not instant death. There are times I'm fed up with a jump so I just skim across the lava instead. I probably shouldn't, but hey, I can't argue with results. On the other hand, the jumps in this level are incredibly awkward. Literally, the very first jump in this level is this mess. The only way I made it over was because I was being chased by a snake. Again, building up momentum then jumping is more effective, albeit more terrifying. It's hard to convey how frustrating this is, but let me tell you, it took over 20 attempts over the span of three days to beat this level. That's why this review took so long. The problem is I don't know if I can blame my skill or the game, it's, it's kind of hard to tell at this point. One good thing is that the music is pretty effective. It's a dark reprise of Prince Ali from the first film which, of course, Jafar used against Aladdin. See? Effort did go into this game. The second level is... a bit better? Again I was getting frustrated, but most enemies can be dodged and it's all a matter of jumping. This is the whole enchilada right here, pal. All of your skill is gonna be put to the test. Here's a tip. Don't bother with this. All I did was fall and scramble onto the center. Why? Because there are platforms leading from the center up to the exit. Thank you, kind developers. So now we finally reached the final showdown against Nazira and Jafar's head in a hole? Oh, you wanted an actual showdown with Jafar. Oh, too bad. The worst thing about this is that it's the easiest boss in the game. Here's how it works. Nazira will fly around Jafar and every now and then will throw a MacGuffin to boost his health until he starts fighting. Here's the thing. When Nazira prepares to throw a MacGuffin, you can throw a knife at her and she'll drop it. Do this four times and she'll bugger off leaving Jafar to fight you. With no health. Fucking seriously, the final boss has no fucking health. One knife to the face and BAM! Straight down the toilet. Game over. So here's what I did. I let Jafar get to full health so maybe it will pose an actual threat. And you know what? It was actually a decent and challenging fight worthy of a final boss. I had to actively make the game harder on myself for any kind of legitimate challenge. Also, I fear that all the games I play are going to have anticlimactic endings. I mean, here's the ending of Nazira's Revenge. Oh, thank you, Aladdin. Oh, once again, Agrabah is safe because of you. The entire city is in your debt. Give Deadly Creatures some credit, at least the ending was fucking spectacular. Here, the Sultan just says, You did the thing! And then Aladdin and Jasmine shove their frozen faces into each other. Fuck this game. On the surface, it seems like a simple 3D platformer game based on a great film. But darkness lies beneath. If you want an actual fun 3D Aladdin game, Play Disney Infinity. I know it costs an arm and a leg to buy the game and all the extra stuff, but gameplay wise, it's a much more refined version of Nazira's Revenge. I bet you can make a level from it in Disney Infinity. You know what? In fact, in fact, you know what? Hang, hang on a minute. There we go. I remade the whole first level of Nazira's Revenge in Disney Infinity. Get done, Doc. <laughs>
This was a video I made, and this was a video you watched, so thank you for doing so. Yeah, this one was much more angry than I expected it to be, but man, the game deserved it. It was fun to tear it to shreds. But if you want to see me in a bit more of a positive light, then you can check out my previous videos, including my Halloween special on deadly creatures or Inspector Gadget for the Game Boy Advance. And if you like what you saw, why not, you know, like and subscribe and all that hoo-ha that people do, apparently. Well, that's all from me. Ta-ta!